Thanks for your interest in this video. The first speaker is Michael de Manancourt in his role as President of the Yoga Teachers Association of Australia. He speaks on his vision for the Yoga Teachers Association as it transitions to its new role as Yoga Australia. And our second speaker is Simon Borg Olivia. Simon is the Director of Yoga Synergy and is one of the most well-known faces of yoga in Australia. I've also interviewed two Ayurvedic doctors, Dr. Rama Prasad, one of Australia's most respected physicians and practitioners of Ayurveda, and Dr. Sean Matthews, who is a medical doctor, author, and Ayurvedic educator. So the Yoga Teachers Association started uh, just over 10 years ago and our main focus really is to support yoga teachers in the work that they do, um, to bring yoga teachers together as a professional network, but also to, I guess, be involved in the development of the professional standards and the professional recognition of what yoga teachers already do offer, but often uh, offer it in a way that's not well recognised. What's happened in more recent years is that as more and more people recognise yoga and seek out yoga from all these different walks of life, uh, they inevitably turn to an organisation to represent what might be described as being the, uh, the peak industry body. So the Yoga Teachers Association, almost by default, almost by um, uh, a grassroots recognition, has in fact been sought out as being the the representative peak body of yoga in Australia and as part of that I, I guess uh, emerging role uh, we've decided to change our name from being the Yoga Teachers Association to Yoga Australia. There is one other thing about you know the future of yoga in Australia I think you know many people comment on this uh, how wonderful it is that there are so many different styles of yoga but I think there's also uh, a recognition that a lot of those different styles of yoga, you know, don't seem to be that well uh, integrated is the right word or cohesive, you know, as, as a group of yoga teachers. So one of the things that I see, um, this is my own passion and very much part of what Yoga Australia is all about, is actually to bring the, together the community of yoga teachers especially, uh, to work much more closely even amongst their different styles and their different approaches because we don't really want to be you know, creating divisions in the different approaches. You know, I think that there's a great opportunity here to be working better and supporting each other for the benefits that, you know, that yoga brings to people's lives. I've had a passion for yoga all my life. And in the beginning when I first started to teach, not many people did yoga. Then when Bianca and I became physiotherapists, we were received very well, I think, and we were, we were invited to teach at various physiotherapy conferences and conventions and gave lectures to the scientific community on the benefits of yoga. And I think at that point, uh, the understanding that Western practitioners had of yoga was enhanced and the image of yoga was improved for a while. Then, around the turn of the century, a lot of people started doing yoga and a lot of people started learning to become teachers in very short time. And so what's happened now is a lot of doctors, chiropractors, physiotherapists, osteopaths and therapists in general have a general idea that yoga is not that good for you. And even personal trainers often don't have high regard of yoga. And partly this is because the people who are doing a lot of the teaching are not that qualified. And, and this I find very sad. And I really want to change the image of yoga and bring it back to the very credible place that it should be. And the way I would like to do that would be by furthering the, the teaching of as many teachers as possible. Because in the end, yoga can be a fantastic therapy, it can also be a tremendous way to increase strength, flexibility, cardiovascular fitness and mental control. And it can do it in a very ethical way. Whereas often people practicing many types of exercise, and unfortunately yoga when it's taught 
by um, many people today can fall into this category, that they practice with a lot of tension, a lot of aggression, that leads to physical danger for the back, for example, for the joints, and many therapists will, will attest to having many yoga practitioners coming in as yoga victims, and, um, and also damage to the physiology. So, whereas yoga should be helping one's physiology, if you over tense, over stretch, and over breathe, which many yoga practitioners think that yoga is about over breathing, over tensing, and over stretching, you find that your physiology becomes disrupted. And when the sympathetic nervous system or the flight fight response is overstimulated, as it is in many exercise forms and much of yoga as it's taught today, then the dominant emotions become fear and anger. And if we want a world which is free of war and violence, then it's really important that yoga becomes a mainstream accepted form of uh, physical activity. And in that way then, uh, people can start to have as their dominant emotional state peace and love and happiness. It, it, it might take you know, another t you know, 15 or 20 years, you will see Ayurveda uh, as a part of um, general health curriculum. It took so, much, it's so long for the Chinese medicine to come to the current level. Naturopathy, herbalism, they're all accepted as uh, valid um, healing modalities. Yoga is uh, taken over by everyone. Many universities are researching in yoga, uh, you know, applying yogic techniques um, in improving health, re reducing stress. And Ayurveda is, in my view, going to be the next big thing. Uh, because there are so many Western Ayurvedic practitioners coming from Europe and America, many parts of Europe, uh, England, and uh, they they are very well trained. So Ayurveda is going to be the next big thing. Yoga was the thing, yoga still is the thing. Um, Ayurveda is going to be the next big thing. Um, what I want to do with Ayurveda over the next few decade, uh, decades will be starting a health farm, opening a health farm with um, food, herbs, um, healing center, um, training center, so all in one kind of health farm, so health villages. And if we have a bunch of them in Australia, Australia is the best uh, for that kind of uh, uh, activities because the space, land is great, soil is good, there are so many good places in Australia with amazing co high quality soil. And most importantly, over 2000 um, Ayurvedic herbs are found in Australia. They are native to Australia. Happily, Ayurveda in Australia is starting to become more and more well known. Um, I think probably riding on the back of yoga. Uh, yoga has probably only been in Australia for 40 or 50 years and uh, we're starting to become more discerning in our approach to yoga and the teaching of yoga. And with that has come more and more interest in Ayurveda. Ayurveda is, if you like, as the context in which somebody is practicing yoga. So looking at decisions or uh, choices we can make in terms of our diet and lifestyle and how that can be used to support our practice of yoga. I think more and more yoga teachers are starting to study Ayurveda and realize that not to study Ayurveda is really a disservice to them and also to their students. Hi, I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Come back next week on June 19th, part two will be available. In part two, I will be interviewing Pixie Lillis from the BKS Iyengar Yoga Association of Australia, Swami Kriyatmananda from Sachananda Yoga, Sacha Prem Gibson, who is a Drew Yoga teacher, current IYTA teacher trainer coordinator, and a teacher at Yoga and Daily Life in Sydney. I will also be interviewing Eileen Hall, one of Ashtanga's most respected teachers. I look forward to seeing you then.